In this video, I'm going to show you how I installed an M.2 SSD in my editing laptop. Before opening up the computer, you want to protect yourself from an electrostatic discharge and there are various ways of doing it. For example, you can use an anti-static wristband or you can do what I did, uh, which was I plugged my laptop in, into a power bar, which was grounded. But then while working on the computer, you may have to make sure you never power on the power bar. There are nine total screws that you have to remove uh, for the top and bottom and one in the center. There's a piece of rubber that you need to lift up and also there's some glue underneath it. When you remove all the screws, you still have brackets on the inside, keeping the bottom cover attached to the rest of the shell. I used the plastic prying tool and uh, I'm not sure whether that's the best way of doing it, but I started from the HDMI port and I went slowly around until I separated the bottom from the rest. So here are the internals of this laptop. There is actually only one fan. I thought there were two when I was buying this laptop. Fortunately, the laptop doesn't get very hot. This is where the memory goes. You can put two bars, 16 gigabytes each, so you can have a total of 32 gigabytes. On the bottom here, you can see the battery. It's a small battery, only 48 uh, watt hours. I think that's the weakest point of this laptop. This is the spinning hard drive that the laptop comes with. It's a uh, one terabyte, 7200 RPMs. So that's pretty good. Still doesn't come close to what you will get with an SSD. Here's the M.2 SSD module. It's a tiny thing. It's pretty amazing that it can fit so much data. Here are all the tools that I used to install this drive. I couldn't find a proper Phillips screwdriver, so I had to use my pocket knife. And I also used this plastic prying tool. So now I'm going to install the SSD. Once you have the laptop open, it's a super fast job. Just make sure that the module slides all the way into the socket and attach this single screw. Replace back the cover, put back all the screws, and then we are ready to do the next step, which is migrating the operating system from the old uh, hard drive to this new SSD. Before this type of work, it's always good to back up your data. Right now, the system still doesn't recognize the, the new SSD. It only shows me the, the old spinning drive as the C drive. So you just need to run the disk management and initialize this uh, new disk, which in my setup here is disk zero. Now Windows recognizes disk zero, which is the, the SSD. Before copying the C drive, I'm going to run the defragment and optimize tool. So this way the C drive is as compact as it can be. Next thing, I'm going to install the tool that I'm going to use to migrate the OS and that is the easy as to do backup, uh, the free version. The free version has everything that we need, so there's no need to buy a license. So once you install and launch the EasyAS tool, you want to click on the system clone. The program recognizes the, the C drive as the source drive, so we just need to specify the target drive, which here is uh, drive zero. Don't forget to check the box to optimize for SSD. So click next and start copying the C drive. This might take a while depending on how big your C drive is, so just be patient and give it the time it needs. Once the program finishes cloning the C drive, you want to restart the computer, but this time you want to boot uh, from the SSD. So you'll have to go into the boot menu and uh, select the correct drive. Once in the boot menu, go to the boot priority section and select uh, your SSD as the default drive. Just make sure that your SSD is at the top of the list of bootable drives. So finish booting. Once you get into Windows, go to File Explorer and you should see two drives. The C drive should be your SSD and the E drive should be your old the one terabyte uh, spinning drive. As you can see, both drives are marked as operating system drives, so you can still boot from any of the two drives. So once you've booted successfully from the SSD and also you've checked that all the data copied uh, from the, the old drive, then you can uh, format uh, the one terabyte hard drive. It's a spacious drive that's going to be great for storing videos, photos, music, uh, documents, and things like that. 
any future programs that you're going to install, uh, they should go on your SSD. But if the, that drive is as big as mine, then you can of course use it for much more than just Windows and applications. Here you can see how fast the laptop boots up right now. Before it would take more than a minute. So now I have to tell you with the SSD, the laptop is a pleasure to use. Uh, Windows is fast, responsive, all applications load up fast, uh, so it's just uh, fun to use. So I totally recommend uh, doing this upgrade. It's not difficult, just take your time and be careful with the electrostatic discharge. I have more information about this upgrade on our website. Also, if you have any questions, uh, let me know, I'll do my best to help. If you have not seen uh, my review of this laptop, then you can also check it out. If you're looking for a budget editing laptop, then I think this one is a great buy, especially if you do the SSD uh, upgrade. I think you are better off doing it yourself than um, buying another model that comes with an SSD because that's going to cost you a lot more money. So that's all for today. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and until uh, next time.